For the past two years, the marketing department at TaylorMade has been in overdrive. Carbon wood was the future, red was the colour and stealth was its name. Not any longer, carbon wood face remains, but it is now blue and the rebrand to QI10 sees a new chapter in driver technology. And with one model, the quest for inertia has hit new heights. We now have three models, QI10 LS, the Max and Standard model mean there is a driver for every golfer, but the QI10 Max is the one that I feel could be the best ever produced by TaylorMade. And soon, you'll see why. Right, so three models available in the lineup, but for me, there is one standout product that is really, really interesting, and that is the QI10 Max. This is the one that's got the huge amount of suggested forgiveness, and I say suggested because we're going to find out if that's true very, very shortly. I'm here at the Berkshire, I'm going to hit a few balls to warm up, then we're going out on the golf course, but this could be a really interesting driver for 2024. What a start. Wow. Interesting right away is the ball flight and I'm talking about launch. Doesn't seem to be affected in terms of spin and that ball is carrying a long way out of here. A few more on the driving range. Let's get onto the fairways. It's a high launching ball, you know. Do you know what? That's the best example of why this driver is so good. I felt like I slipped a little bit, slightly icy ground at the moment, early on in the morning. It was a terrible swing, and somehow the ball has gone straight, and it's gone long at the same time. I'm amazed at what that's just done, based on the swing I put on it. That's two balls, straight out the path. <laughs> They're literally a couple of yards apart. I felt that second ball was a lot, lot firmer. But I'm gonna tell you in today's video just why, as I said earlier, this QI10 Max is something that is really, really interesting. It is all about that uh, 10K again in the forgiveness MOI stakes. And I've got to say, out on the golf course, which is the all important bit, this has been doing some phenomenal things. The QI10 Max model is the highest combined inertia MOI in tailor-made history, and that is achieved by strategic weighting, and the far rear position carries an incredible 30 grams. So you've seen plenty of close-ups now, no doubt watch plenty of videos about this QI10 lineup. For me, like I said, I'm just pushing the other two for one side for the time being, because it's that Max product that's of real interest. But I want to know what you think in terms of aesthetics. Big change. Red has gone to my disappointment and been replaced by blue that uh, almost looks like very much an Everton blue, but we'll forget about that for the time being. The profile on the Max in particular has been, it's big. It's a 460cc head, but they've achieved sort of a bigger overall profile visually from the top by removing quite a lot of the underneath. A lot of the sole has disappeared and it's a real clever piece of engineering. From the shelf appeal perspective, me, I think this is potentially a real winner. And from what I've seen so far from the other drivers it's competing against, this one for me is popping off the shelf. There's also another big difference that they've made in this QI10 lineup. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Hot Golf, the online golf retailer for all major brands. And if you want new golf gear, then please support us by supporting them. Crown and dress, especially in the sun, is absolutely glistening. I much prefer a matte crown. I don't know why every driver isn't finished with a matte crown. Please tell me why it's not. However, just a little bit of turn to the right there. We just held on to the right side of the fairway, but just another really good high launching ball flight. Again, what I wanted to reference, I've got my Pro Force HL shaft, which has been again, one inch shorter, all about control. This was a shaft that I was fitted for quite some time ago with TaylorMade. So that's their nine degree head 
and that combination is working really, really well. The other big difference I mentioned in the previous clip is the sound and feel has again sort of evolved from what we've heard uh, from the previous iterations of that carbon face. It's, it's very much um, like a normal driver, titanium face driver. It seems to be getting a little bit sharper and it just feels as though it's absolutely zipping out. Great feel, great sound and an address, although that uh, forgetting the, the glossy crown, the actual physical shape of it, I've got no problem with it. It's oversized, but for some reason, it's, uh, it's very unnoticeable, let's say. So why is it that I think this driver is so special? Well, apart from the fact that its performance out on the fairways today has been very good, I also played it at the Glen a few weeks back. It's doing what a lot of drivers are doing in terms of distance, and I've pretty much tested everything right now with my club head speed, I'm generating probably around a 230, 235 carry. Then you've got some numbers you're looking at in terms of optimal spin numbers and launch numbers and all the rest of it. But essentially, ball speeds off the center of the club face remain the same for every driver, we know that. But what's happened with this driver and maybe one or two others, a big concentration as we know on forgiveness. Now forgiveness for me, all it means is that we're getting the same ball speeds out of all of the club face. And don't forget, you've watched reviews from a lot of other channels right now. They're all professional golfers. They'll generally hit the club face, the center of the club face, a lot more often than you or I. I am the best man to test this theory. And believe me, as an average golfer, I hit all over that club face. And I can assure you that this driver is performing incredibly well from all aspects of it. Heel, toe, centre, high and low. And if you look at my dry ball data for those who want it, it's that 230 odd carry. It's a spin number in around 2.2, launching between 14 and 15. They are real. Every parameter is hitting the button. But what I like when you get out on the fairways is you're seeing that consistency. And the ball I just hit off this previous tee, right back into the wind, we're not getting a spin number that's hovering, but we're still launching really high and we're still getting that carry distance. This driver, trust me, is well worth giving a go. But you know what, I think we'll finish there. Even move that ball a little bit from right to left and that one's absolutely gone bounding down the fairways. The big deal for any driver that's been released in the last uh, few days has been the real focus on forgiveness and not necessarily about ball speed, but what they've tried to achieve is no compromise in that ball speed and that spin parameter in launching the ball, but still having forgiveness right across the club face. It's one of those kind of almost a myth. How do you believe and how do you prove whether or not this is forgiving across the club face? Well, I think the only way to do it is by trying it out for yourself and seeing what your thoughts are. Mine are on this particular driver, really, really impressed. It's going a long way. It's been fairly straight today and in the last couple of rounds I've played to be quite honest with you and uh, I think TaylorMade have got something like I said pretty half decent on their hands but the only important thing is like I said go out get custom fit try it for yourself and if you're in the market for a new driver this year then the QI10 Max in my opinion has got to be on the list. Right thanks for watching thanks to the Berkshire Golf Course for having us and uh, I'll see you all soon.